I used to be very insecure, so insecure that I wouldn't even take the bus anywhere because that meant I had to talk to a stranger, the bus driver, and have a conversation with someone, I'll look them in the eyes, and I didn't want to do that. Hi my loves and welcome back to another video. Today I wanted to talk about confidence. I get questions so often, randomly enough, about how are you so confident? Or on the flip side of that, I get, oh, it's so easy for you to be confident because you got it all. And I want to share with you today that by no means do I have it all put together, but I have taken a lot of steps to deal with my life and my baggage and my shit, so to say, to get to where I am today. I was so insecure that I could hardly ever look anyone in the eyes. I basically just felt so uncomfortable in my own skin. I used to think that walking in my own body was so embarrassing because to be honest, I felt more like an alien in this human suit than anything else, but that's a different story. My point is that everything I did was so uncomfortable to me. Eating, breathing, sleeping, walking, maneuvering this suit was embarrassing to me. And I was so uncomfortable, I couldn't look at anyone. And I'm not really even exaggerating. And so I want to share some steps that you can take today if you're dealing with a lack of confidence or just knowing how to really be comfortable in your own body and how to get from A to B. It's by no means an overnight process, but some of these steps will really help you in getting there. So how did I get to where I am today? I'm kind of a tough love kind of person, and so life tends to deliver lessons to me that way. And it's a little bit of a love-hate relationship, but that's just how I learn things. With all of that said, I have done a lot of inner work over the years. I've had, most of you know, a, some would say a fairly traumatic childhood. <laughs> Yeah, let's just put it like that. So I've done a lot of inner work, I've done a lot of shadow work, I've looked at a lot of stuff that I had buried inside of me, and a lot of questioning pretty much everything about my existence, and everything that I've ever been taught and told to believe in. Oftentimes we get insecure because we get picked apart from our parents, we're told what to believe in, how to act, that we're too much, we're not enough, we're too little, we have to do better. And then we learn to shut down and we become insecure. And this starts at a very early age. And for many, this becomes a subconscious pattern that we then have to look at. We basically carry this subconscious idea that we're not good enough the way that we are that we need to do something different in order to gain the love from someone else, the people around us, and for people to think that we're smart enough and that we're lovable and worthy. And so this idea, subconscious or not, that we have of ourselves, that we're not good enough, that idea basically has to die in order for you to birth a confident self. We have to die, so to say, to this idea of who we've been told that we are so that we can birth the part of us that we really truly are. And that is beings of light that has so much valuable information to share with the world because we're all so unique and so different. No one can share you the way that you can share you and you have to get to a point where you understand how valuable that is. You have so much to offer and contribute to this world and so the idea that we would spend so much time trying to become like everyone else, that's this insanity, it's madness. You are worthy. And in case no one else has told you lately, you're beautiful and you're worthy. And you don't have to forget about your own needs and desires to gain the love of someone else, which is basically what we do when we dumb ourselves down. We basically do this because daddy said I wasn't good enough and if I don't do this, he's not gonna love me. So we learn to get love by playing the game that these other people want us to play. And you don't have to do that anymore. That's the first step. Stop playing the game that other people want you to play. The world is literally your playground. It's yours for the taking and you don't have to apologize for being you in whatever shape or form that comes in. <laughs> the only thing you should apologize for is not being you, okay? If you are not you, you should be apologizing because you're basically robbing the world from the true you. And so everyone can play a facade, everyone can play a role. We do that, we put a mask on so many times throughout the day. We're different when we're with our lovers, uh, we're different when we're with our best friend, when we're with um, our parents, when we're at work. We put so many different masks on and I don't think there's any one personality that we, like, we're not just this one person. We come with different 
faces at different times and that's completely fine but there still has to be some level of consistency in who you are and so if you are scared or embarrassed of the things that you like the things you like to watch read do say how you speak and act then you're not being honest with people and you make people like this idea of you that isn't really true. So confidence really comes from knowing and believing that you are worthy of life, of love, of anything that you want because you are enough, more than enough. And you don't have to change yourselves to fit the mold of someone else's desires or someone else's idea of who you should be. Because essentially what you're doing is making them love an idea of you, a fake you and that is doomed to fail. A fake love can't last, and so if you are anything but yourself, it's not going to last. Think about that for a second, and then think about most people would, would rather have other people love an idea of them. They would rather love an idea of someone else to have some form of love in their life than to have no one at all because essentially there is no you you always have someone and that someone should really be yourself so basically if you want confidence you have to learn how to fill your own cup you have to look at your shadows and you have to dig for the root of your insecurities is it not worthy or not good enough or too much too little too loud to anything you have to be willing to ask these questions and then also be willing to go there and it, that means really being honest with yourself which most people don't really want to do that they want they want confidence but they don't want to do the work that takes to get there most people just want but they don't really want to go through the effort and so confidence means doing a lot of inner work confidence is resting in yourself and the knowing of who you are and that what you do and what you say is good enough and that it's beyond good enough it's all there is because that is who you are and that's perfect for this world so you have to start asking these questions and you have to be willing to go there and then you start being your own best friend now this is something that's perhaps the hardest thing for a lot of people especially women but when you do that and you become your own best friend you set the standard really effing high as to what kind of relationships it is that you allow into your life when you know what kind of treatment you will tolerate from yourself you know what kind of treatment you will tolerate from other people be it friendships or romantic relationships you set the bar high and you don't allow any other crap to come into your life. If people pick, play small or try to pull a fast one on you, no, because you know that the relationship that you have with yourself is the foundation of what you will allow and not allow in your life. So when you set the standard really high, that's what you start to attract in your life. You welcome positive, loving relationships into your life and you end the cycle of self-abuse. And that is really the root of confidence ending the cycle of self-abuse because when you're not confident you're basically just telling yourself that you're not good enough and that part of you telling yourself that you're not good enough you're not worthy you're too much you're too little that is self-abuse which we have learned as i mentioned in the beginning and so by switching that and becoming more confident aware of yourself your own best friend you tell yourself i'm good enough i'm amazing what I do is incredible and what I have to share with the world is important. And that is what creates confidence. You're welcome. No, but seriously, that's the recipe for confidence. So I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please give it a thumbs up and share it with any of your friends that you feel like may need a little boost of confidence or maybe just some ticks, ticks tips and tricks on how to gain more confidence. And also, if you haven't subscribed, make sure you do that because I make all kinds of fun videos around here. So stick around as things get magical and I will see you soon.